Asus alludes to the new ROG Flow Z13 as the most remarkable gaming tablet available, and a gander at the spec sheet certainly upholds this assertion. Our audit test is furnished with a pristine Intel Alder Lake Core i9 CPU, a committed NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050T, and 16GB of LPDDR5-5200 RAM. To have the option to utilize the parts exhibition, the producer has executed fume chamber cooling as well as fluid metal on the processor for further developed heat move. Moreover, there's a 13.4-inch 1610 showcase with a goal of 1920 by 1200 pixels, a 120Hz invigorate rate, and G-Sync. Alternatively, there are different models with more vulnerable i7 or i5 CPUs, as well as the typical RTX 3050 or even only the coordinated Z graphics of the Alder Lake processor. This setup with the iGPU could be fascinating to game while in a hurry, however need to utilize the outer XG Mobile eGPU, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 or AMD Radeon RX 6850MXT, at home. Our test design is accessible for around €2,100, tilde $2,367. There aren't numerous quick opponents for the ROG Flow Z13, which is the reason we likewise resort to typical PCs with comparative parts as correlation gadgets. It's astounding the way that normal it feels utilizing the Sony Link Buds, considering how abnormal it looks contrasted with other genuine remote earbuds. This is a really unique way to deal with choices like the Sony WF-1000XM4 that seal the ear waterway utilizing froth or silicone ear tips, or the Apple AirPods, which doesn't seal, yet at the same time includes a hard tip to stick in your ear. These genuine remote earbuds include ring-formed tips, intended to settle tenderly into the bends of your ear, and keeping in mind that it can take a little experimentation, the outcome is quite agreeable. The Sony Link Buds is an all-plastic undertaking, which keeps things extremely lightweight each earbud weighs just 4G. The ringed ear tips are long-lasting, which could appear to be an issue, however these earbuds aren't intended to get stuck into your ear trench. Rather, they should rest in the folds of your ear, and to work with that Sony incorporates five distinct sizes of separable silicone ear balances, additional little, little, medium, enormous, and extra large, actually utilizing the Sony Link Buds as standard for a couple of genuine remote earbuds. The earbuds include contact touchy sides. Of course, tapping two times will interruption or play your media, and tapping multiple times will avoid forward a track without the Sony Headphones Connect application, that is everything you can do. In any case, while the controls are restricted, utilizing them can feel pleasant assuming you've at any point tapped a genuine remote earbud with silicone ear tips and observed the going with pull impact awkward. No there's absolutely no part of that here, and tapping the earbuds will not unstick anything either. The Link Buds likewise bring support for another control technique Sony calls Wide Area Tap, which is turned on of course. This is fundamentally a similar control technique as standard on ear tap control, yet you tap the space simply before your ear. Indeed, you can skip melodies by delicately smacking your own face, in the event that you so decide. Wide Area Tap works pretty dependably. However I observe it can unstick the earbuds from your ear significantly more regularly than simply tapping on the earbud. On the off chance that it's not self-evident, it's actually important that this control technique additionally looks rather ludicrous. Assuming you're the sort to get hesitant openly, wide area tap may not be your cherished thing in the world. You ought to introduce Sony headphones connect to get the most or even what some should think about the most un out of utilizing the Sony Link Buds. The experience of utilizing Sony headphones connect here is essentially equivalent to with items like the Sony WH-1000XM4 or WF-1000XM4. It carries admittance to an EQ and firmware refreshes, as well as the Sony 360 Reality Audio Highlight, which functions admirably, however a couple of real-time features support it. Sony headphones connect likewise carries a spec of customization to the on-ear controls. Everything is as yet represented by one or the other a few taps, however you can set each earbud to a singular control profile, dealing with volume, the capacity to really return a melody, voice right-hand enactment, and Spotify access. On top of the control choices, you can flip more specific highlights like versatile volume control and wide region tap utilizing the application. The application additionally allows you to turn on Sony's DSCE include, which some vibe works on the sound nature of exceptionally packed sound files. The versatile volume control choice passes on the volume acclimation to the earbuds, 
in view of how much sound the amplifiers get. It works, however it's honestly really confusing, something we encountered with the Google Pixel Buds A series as well. There's no choice to redo awareness, it's simply on or off, and that implies that regardless of whether you're in a peaceful climate, the linked buds continually changes playback volume. Essentially, assuming my choices are this or delicately insulting myself to raise or lower the volume, I'm picking the slap particularly given that the all-around unremarkable battery execution, erring on that in a little, endures a shot with the component turned on. The Sony Link Buds associates with your gadget of decision utilizing Bluetooth 5.2 and upholds the AAC codec, as well as the default SBC. There's no solid great sound codec for Android clients, however interfacing over SBC is bounty stable. There's no Bluetooth multipoint here, however you can something like tune in mono with the right earbud. Whenever I originally removed the Xbox Series S from its case, I could barely accept how little it was. The control center measures 10.8 by 5.9 by 2.6 inches, making it essentially more modest than the PS5, PS4, Xbox Series 10 or Xbox One. It's with regards to a similar size as a Wii U, yet you can play much more games on it. The vast majority of the control center is white, save for a round dark vent on top, which stands out agreeably from the remainder of the casing. It has elastic feet on one of the flat surfaces and one of the upward ones, and there's a lot of ventilation, regardless of what direction you situate it. Profoundly, 3.6 GHz Custom Zen 2 GPU, Custom RDNA 2, 4 teraflops memory, 10 GB capacity, 512 GB SSD max resolution, 1440p max frame rate, 120 FPS ports, HDMI, USB A, Ethernet size, 10.8 by 5.9 by 2.6 inches weight, 4.3 pounds like the Xbox Series 10, the Xbox Series S keeps its ports basic. There's a USB A port toward the front, alongside a power button and a matching button. Since the Series S has no plate drive, the remainder of the front board is simply vacant space. On the back, there are two additional USB A ports, a HDMI port, an Ethernet port and a power port. I half expected the Ethernet port to miss, since that is typically the principal thing to go in less expensive device varieties, yet I'm happy that it's still here. There are no USB-C ports. For consoles that are apparently expected to last the following 5 to 7 years, this appears to be an enormous oversight. USB-C gives quicker charging and information move, to avoid anything related to new gaming adornments that depend on USB-C dongles. While USB-N is still fine for the occasion, the absence of USB-C ports is a major missed opportunity. If you've utilized the Xbox One point of interaction, then, at that point, you've utilized the Xbox Series S interface. That is not me playing demure, it's basically a perception. While Microsoft has refreshed the Xbox retail facade throughout the course of recent months, the real connection point hasn't changed essentially in years. Whenever you boot up the control center, you'll in any case see a home screen with your latest games as a whole and exercises. Whenever you look down, you'll in any case see store, media and game pass choices. Hit the Xbox button on the regulator, and you'll have the option to explore through your games and applications, see your full library, see framework notices, deal with your companions list, view your achievements, access settings thus forth. At the gamble of saying out loud what everyone was already thinking, the Xbox Series S isn't close to as strong as the Xbox Series 10 on the off chance that you're acquainted with the two control center's equipment specs, you'll know why. Though the Series 10 flaunts a GPU with up to 12 teraflops of result, 16 gigabytes RAM, 1 terabyte SSD stockpiling and a 4K blue beam plate drive, the Series S has a GPU with up to 4 teraflops of result, 10 gigabytes RAM, 512 gigabytes SSD stockpiling and no circle drive by any means. Most Xbox Series X games will run at 4K goal and 60 edges each second, albeit certain titles will uphold goals up to 8 kelvins and outline rates up to 120 edges each second. Xbox Series S, then again, has a maximum goal of 1440p for games, albeit the 120 FPS outline rate is still in fact conceivable. Without getting too granular, basically the Xbox Series S is substantially less strong than the Series 10, which is the reason it is so expensive less. Nonetheless, the Series S, humble specs can be either a deal-breaker, a disturbance or a non-issue, contingent upon your arrangement and how you intend to utilize the console.
It's not until you get Xbox Series S regulator in your grasp that you start to feel the distinction. The surface is matte and somewhat more impervious to perspire than previously. All the more significantly, the grasps are currently finished toward the back, which makes the regulator more straightforward to hold and more agreeable by and large. There's additionally a share button in the focal point of the regulator, which allows you to take screen captures and video clasps and so forth. I never really utilized it, yet you may. The regulator's just significant disadvantage is that it actually depends on AA batteries out of the crate, rather than an all the more harmless to the ecosystem, and, for the end client, reasonable, battery-powered battery. You can in any case purchase battery-powered battery packs independently, however it's only another pointless expense that Microsoft would be able, and ought to, have borne, particularly since each arrangement of AAs will net you somewhere around 30 hours of life.